Good. I think it's still morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, why have I got the ability to sit, stand up here I'm, as a simple retired police officer? For the last 15 years of my career serving Northeastern Ontario, I was your traffic inspector. So as you can see in this very sad photograph, that uh, younger looking svelte gentleman in the black pants and the white shirt is actually me. Um, there's going to be images that I show that are just, I've been to every one of these. I went to every collision that was a fatal collision or what we would call a benchmark collision in northeastern Ontario. And I'm just going to talk to you about the realities of what we face. So I call it that the transportation pipe is full. And it is full. You've all experienced this, highway closures be it a crash, be it weather, um, for many reasons, uh, washout, uh, congestion. And the problem is there's no detours in Northern Ontario. We have two lane highways and there's no other way to get around them unless you wish to back all the way back down and it's a 26 hour detour. Uh, when we had the Nipigon River Bridge fail, um, that cut off the country. There was no other way to get across this country except going through the United States. There is no other way to get around. This is the pinch point, and it exists here. And to have a viable option via air and or rail will make us a more efficient and safer province. Um, the just-in-time delivery process, and some people say, what is that? If you noticed in the past decade, or actually almost two decades now, there's a lot of trucks on the road. And the reason is a lot of businesses no longer warehouse. The warehouse for manufacturing and food preparation, food delivery and all of those things, the warehouses now are on our highways. You don't have warehouses where they're bringing in material to create things. The warehouses are moving trucks and it's just a just in time delivery process. So our transportation of the commercial motor vehicles has increased, but if you've noticed, uh, we've had two lane highways in Northern Ontario since, well, since we've had highways. Um, we are trying slowly to four lane the highways but the reality is, in our lifetime and many more to come, Highway 17 and 11 is not going to be four-laned all the way through the province. So is there some solutions to that? And I hope there is. And I think the train system is a very good solution. So this is the reality in the last two years in Northern Ontario. It's uh, pretty sad. I understand there was about 112 of us registered here today. So to make it a reality, look around the room. In the last two years, six of us survived on our highways. 106 people died. So pick a table. That's, I'd be talking to an empty room. And who were they? A lot of them are from the north. Because I've done the studies to see who they are, trying to come up with solutions to reduce this on our highways. They are from the north. They're us. And what could they have delivered to the province? What could they deliver to Northern Ontario? You look down at the other number at the bottom of total collisions, 15,321 collisions in Northern Ontario. This is OPP jurisdiction, not including the municipal police services. And that's an important number to understand. And how do we reduce that number is we take some of the pressure off the pipe. We take pressure off the pipe, and I mean the transportation pipe, and that's if we can get them into a railway loop and get them off the highways where it's safer and it's better, and they can get to their destinations and allow the transport trucks to do their job, to allow the buses to do their job. They're professional drivers. A lot of people blame trucks for a lot of the fatalities, and they're about at fault. Northern Ontario, they're at fault about 30% of the time. It's the rest of us and our small cars that are doing the problem. Um, if we lose any more of our rail system, there was talk about the Algoma rail system being in jeopardy. The estimate is 60,000 more truckloads a year on our highway. That's a two-lane highway. We can't let that happen. The other reality is, as someone mentioned, I'm a baby boomer. I'm the end of that. We're all getting older, and this is a capacity issue. If any of you read or were watching the inquest that happened here in uh, Sudbury just in the last few weeks, to deal with a, a driver that was killed in a car crash. I testified at that inquest. This is a capacity issue, and we need to look at that. Baby boomers, we're having more issues with cognitive impairment. We're having more mobility issues. We're having all of those things, and sadly, it makes us bad drivers. 
But the only way to get from point A to point B in Northern Ontario is on our highway. Yes, you can fly, as mentioned before, and yes, you can take the bus, but the reality is the majority of us travel by car. And as we speak today in Ontario, there is half a million suspended drivers in Ontario. Over 500,000 of us, and it's going to get more. Those people need to be able to travel, and we need to have alternatives, and the rail system and service makes sense to do that. What's interesting is Transport Canada has said the social cost of policing, uh, or rather collisions, is, is huge. And they say two-thirds of the collisions in Canada occur on two-lane highways. So that's about 66% of the collisions happen on two-lane highways. Sadly, in Northern Ontario, that number goes up to 82%. Happen on our two-lane highways, because that's what we have. That's how we can get from our community to community to community. And that's what we're stuck with. So the social cost, as I mentioned, Transport Canada back in 2007, so this is uh, a decade old. And there are newer numbers coming out. But the social cost for collisions in Canada was $63 billion a year. In Ontario, $17.8 billion a year and 2007 dollars for just collisions. What's interesting is fatal collisions account for about 1% of the, the total number, but they account for 60% of that cost because of the nature of them. So that basically works down to $10.6 billion out of the Ontario income, our money, to look after 1% of the collisions. So if we can get people into trains, traveling from point A to point B, that reduces the number of collisions on our highway, reduces the number of people who die on our highways, what could we do with $10.6 billion a year? And that is the reality of it. So, now I'm gonna talk about a river, and you're gonna go, what? <laughs> Why are we talking about rivers? I want to talk to you about the riverbank, and this is a philosophy that I picked up a long time ago, back in 2001, when I was a much younger and just became an inspector. And I was listening to a gentleman from England, and he talked about the riverbank, and he talked about policing today, and it still holds true today. And this is problem solving today. Policing today is like a person standing on the edge of a riverbank, and you hear someone calling for help. So what's a natural thing that a police officer is going to do? We're going to go into the river to help that person. The trouble is I'm in the river and then somebody else sails past me going, I need help. And then another, and then another. And all I do is get into this constant trying to save, trying to save, and I miss some that go past me. And at no point did we ever have the thought, well, wait a second, let's go upstream and see who's throwing them in. And this is what this, the analogy is this. We have people dying on our Northern Ontario highways, way too many. Let's go upstream and see what's there that's causing it. And sadly, I think it might be an empty train station. Thank you. Thank you.